Good evening, everybody. My name is Gavin, and I'm a total conservationist, and I'm from Malaysia. And I would like to share you a story about an investigation that helped my friends and I to solve a sea turtle mystery. And we revealed some interesting results from that particular uh, quest that we had. So it's about six months ago. I was in an island called Boom Boom Island in Samporna. It's the east part of uh, Sabah, part of Borneo Island. So it was a gloomy gray day. It was a very low tide. And I would just hop out from the boat and I was on a mission. R usually during a low tide, you get to see greenish sea grasses, yellowish seaweeds, or even some small crabs rushing towards their homes. But what I saw is different. I saw bones, skeletons, skulls. These things are, belongs from endangered sea turtles. And it's not just two or just 10 turtles, it's about 50 turtles or probably more than that. Now, it's very hard for me to explain to you how bad is the situation it is. But allow me to bring you back, rewind you back a bit and explain to you how I got to this situation. So maybe to some of you that know me, I'm a sea turtle nerd or a geek. And I think sea turtles are awesome, actually. And, I, and one of the biggest threat for marine turtles in Sabah is marine turtle poaching. So it started basic, so as I move around in uh, particular in Boom Boom Island, I get to see this particular thing. In Sabah, it's the reported cases started in 2004 and until 2009 where foreign fishermen come to Sabah to encroach to catch sea turtles. And we had this very slow, quiet downtime until 2014, where we discovered about 50 rotten turtle carcasses in one single island. Now, that is very perplexing to me because it happens in our particular uh, state, in my own state myself. So, because of that, uh, I was, so when I moved to back to Boomam Island, I was part of an investigation team embarked in a quest to solve the sea turtle mystery that's happening in our shores. So, we drove so what we did, we interviewed people. We drove boats far away to islands. We tried to get information, intelligence or information as, as much as we can. We even strategized with our local community groups to do our spies to get more information about this. So until sometimes we get stumbled in between. So across the years, at the same time as well, we struggled. Across, over the years, we encountered more turtle carcasses coming in. Carcasses coming on the beach, floating on the water, with signs of poaching. Sometimes I get to see at least one turtle carcass per week, or one community member once shared to me with a friend of mine. The culprit is still out there, but out there basically. So finally, about a couple of uh, years, we're able to find bits of pieces. So we are currently in a quest with bits of, we have a big puzzle, we found some um, clues around, we're trying to fit the pieces bit by bit to make this, solving this big puzzle that we have. So we found interesting results. We found that for fishermen and community members, community members are involved in catching turtles and help to trade it to foreign fishermen and also to middlemen. In the north of Sabah, they collect turtles, live turtles, stockpiling turtles to a certain number before they move to bigger fishing vessels. While in the southeast of Sabah, they only collect certain parts of the turtles and the remaining will discard it away. And all these turtles and all these parts are being brought to China to be traded for consumption and decoration purposes. Now, this is very, very surprising to us and the team because we felt that this is, a, this is something that is very uh, frustrating to us, actually. So as I... So I found, so I, I'm in a new, so I'm in a turtle graveyard, but the different thing is, it's a new graveyard this time that was discovered two weeks ago. Not much difference, bones, skeletons, and skulls. So the team went to, the, so the team, investigation team, including myself, has found a stumble block where we are now our low point in our investigation quest, and we're really feeling frustrated about it. But I want, to, I want to share with you a bit of a light in this quest. 
So a couple of weeks ago, I was on an island, in a different island. Some lead from the investigation helped me to go to this particular village because some turtle poachers are there. So I was doing a bit of a spying over there as well. So I was, I was sitting at the corner of Rosia's wooden stilt house. So Rosia is a friend of mine for eight years. And she has led a local community group to protect particular marine turtles in Omadal Island. She has great passion towards conservation and she strives towards to protect environment. So I was sitting on that corner across, because she was in the kitchen cooking f uh, some fried fish for her family. So I was looking at her because I'm feeling really frustrated on what's going on with the quest. So I, I was uh, sitting down, I was looking at her, and then I was tempted to ask her a question, but I was also afraid to ask that question. So I asked her, Kak Rosia, Kenapa kau selamatkan punyu? Or in English, Rosia, can I ask you a question? Why do you save sea turtles? She paused. I remembered there's only one particular light shine to her to her face, peeping through that wooden kitchen window of hers. So she looked at me, and she said, "Aku mak haming maka bokok masa." in her local dialect language, which means I save sea turtle because I feel sad about them. So with this new discovery of new mode of operation, basically, that, for, uh, that foreign fishermen is asking community members to catch turtles, and we now know that community members are involved in catching turtles. Now, this, this to, to me, this is adding more complexity to the particular threat that we have. And we do, we do have this big puzzle. And we do have some missing pieces still in between. And we still have a lot of work to do. But Rosia's simple yet honest answer made me realize that all hope is not last. Even though we have reached a particular darkness in our quest, but there's still within a light within us. Even though that community members are involved in this, but they are also the, they are also the agent of change here. It could be because it could be more enforcement or more uh, surveillance efforts should be done. Or maybe community members can be community wildlife rangers or guardians. It could be anything. So I would like to end you with this message that even though you reach a particular that end in your quest, but certain light will come through across that. Thank you very much for your attention.